Hey everybody, today we are doing the pendulum swing and if you go to your uh, links in your um, Google Classroom, you will see a link to this pendulum swing here. Now this is not mine, this is on YouTube and um, it's more of a physics. It's, it's someone talking about the physics of the pendulum swing, but this is the basics of what it will look like. Okay, so let's try it here. Again, I'm using Rough Animate on Rough Animator on an iPad with um, an iPad Pro and the uh, iPencil. But uh, you can do this traditional, you can do this 3D, you can do whichever way you like. I, again, like to do it freehand. It's just, it's messy, it's quick, and it keeps me from getting tight and just making these perfect mechanical looking circles, which, who wants to do that? If you want to do that, you just go to Blender and make a perfect sphere, and it's really easy to do. But look, right now we're just going to study the concept of animation. And so first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my guidelines. I'm going to draw a half circle, and I'm going to draw the ball at the end of the little string, on the uh, on the bottom right there and then I'm gonna draw how far I want that ball to go and I'm gonna put it a little bit higher right there and you hear the little parakeet in the background I always have a bird on the, my shoulder if you ever notice on tutorials so he's just giving his little comments in the background there okay so aside from the little parakeet talking you have this area that shows how big that ball is gonna get and that's gonna keep my volumes so this is just strictly for 2d hand-drawn and uh, it will actually keep your volume straight all the way through and make sure that your ball is always, always the same size because that can change a lot, especially if you are working straight ahead animation. We're gonna be doing some pose to pose animation for this one, but you could always do straight ahead too. So my guidelines are done. I put that on a separate layer. Now, if you're working in actually traditional with paper with a light box, you're just gonna put that on a separate paper and you're gonna write as guidelines and that is gonna guide you. Now, you might not hit all of those keyframes on there, all of those balls, and that's okay. You just wanna make sure you hit your end frame and your last frame on there because you want those to match up perfectly so that it doesn't jump. Otherwise, it's gonna give a little jump at the end of your animation, okay? so. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna diagram these out just a little bit more to make sense of this whole guidelines. Now, if you notice, I'm working digitally. I am um, trying to label all of my layers. That's really, really important. As an animator, it's so important. And as an artist working digitally, that you don't just make a mess of everything. I've said that before, and I'm thinking it's so important to have a class just talking about the proper way to organize. And if anybody needs that, it's me. I tend to be a real mess when I get into my art, but it has caused me so much pain and it's so stupid to do things like that. It's so much better to label things, to keep things organized, and you know, I what can I say, I'm lazy in that area, but I am trying to change. Thank God I got married, okay? So we, are, we have labeled, we have guidelines labeled, and we have the ball labeled. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do the um, keyframes of it. So I have one ball there, one in the middle, and one on the other side. So I have three keyframes, and that's pretty much shows where my animation, now there's no timing or anything in this. So I have to put some timing into it. And remember, this. just think of it like a rocket ship. Generally speaking, a rocket ship, once it builds up its momentum, it goes very fast but it's at first hard, right? It's hard for that rocket ship to take off the ground because it's first initially going to be taking off and it's gonna be uh, hard for it to leave the ground. But then once it comes down, I mean, once it goes up and it's initially, it's gonna start building up speed and going faster and faster. So the ball is the same way. It has a certain amount of energy. It's actually gonna be falling down, but it's gonna happen slowly. So. We're going to start. That's going to be the number one ball right there. And I'm going to go ahead and label that, that number. And that's the number one ball. Then later on, that ball in the middle that's closest to the ground, closest to the word guidelines, that is not going to be the number two ball. It is not number two. But I'm going to think of the in-betweens between that ball. And so I have to think of my timing right now and think about how many drawings I want it to be. Well, I want the whole thing to be about one second. Half a second for that ball to fall 
and go all the way to one end and then half a second back. So that's one second, okay? So I am, and here's where it gets a little confusing, I'm animating on twos. That means for each two frames, it's one drawing, 24 frames a second. Now it would be easier if I animated on ones, but I'm gonna do a little bit less of the work and animate on twos, and it, to me it'll still look the same. So now on my guidelines, I'm going back and I'm just measuring it out. If I'm animating on twos, that means half the halfway point is going to be the sixth, the sixth drawing right there in the middle. So I have one, two, three, four, five balls going to my sixth drawing right there in the middle. Halfway is six. So that means that to finish it, for it to go its complete cycle one time, all the way from top left-hand corner to top right-hand corner, it's going to be 12 drawings, right? So that means going back up, it's gonna be six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So first there is one to six, and then six to 12. So this is my 12th drawing right there. And this is where straight ahead animation, you know, um, it's, it's just difficult to time out things and to get a precision like this. You can get, you, I can do straight ahead um, uh, pendulum swing, but breaking it down just seems a little bit more logical because it's more of a mechanical kind of feeling to it. So it seems much more logical to break it down with numbers. So number one ball is the green ball. Remember in our studio, what we do is the drawing before is green and the drawing after the drawing, your drawing right now is red, okay? So green is growth, so we think of that before, and red is it's ripe, and that's after. That's the way we do it here. So you might wanna set your digital parameters to that in whatever software you're working on. So I'm drawing the second ball right there, and you can see the second ball is almost right on top of the first ball. Now I'm doing the third ball, and that one is a little bit further down than the first ball. So it's gonna move incrementally. And what does that mean? It means it's going to move very smoothly and slow. The movement is going to be smooth and slow. So it's just being let go right there. It's going to slowly come down. It hasn't picked, it hasn't gotten the as fast as it will. You know, there's a uh, speed that if you drop an object from, if you dropped anything, something heavy, a bowling ball from, from the a building, there's a certain speed where it reaches terminal velocity. And, but it, it, until that point, it will accelerate. See, I told you animation has some physics in it. It will accelerate and continue to accelerate until it reaches terminal velocity. Well, this pendulum swing won't, won't have time to reach terminal velocity, but it will start accelerating and that's the whole point. So right now it's gonna start off slow because it hasn't, it hasn't picked up speed yet. So right now I'm on the fourth drawing and you can see how bunched up those, those balls are, right? They're bunched up because it's slow and smooth. Now you can really see that I am now putting more space in between. Right there the two balls are touching whereas before they were intersecting each other, now they are touching. So. Now it means that it's picking up some speed. It's going a little bit faster, isn't it? And again, I'll add another frame and I'll, I'm gonna do the in-between. There's That shows that I am going between the fourth drawing and the sixth drawing. And the, so this is going to be, there's a the sixth drawing and I'm just looking at the animation and seeing how it looks. Testing it out. And now I'm gonna go back and I'm going to add that fifth drawing right in between. So you can look at, at my guidelines and you can see how they're all bunched up. But I'll, I'll want to soon, when I go back up and hit that sixth drawing, that one right at the bottom, that's when it's gonna be sped up and it's gonna start slowing down. So I'll start diagramming that right there. So from six being the bottom drawing, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and finally the 12th drawing I already have in place. So you can see how bunched up those drawings are right there till it hits the 12th drawing. Because why? All that speed and that momentum is carrying the ball until gravity starts taking a hold of it and it will slowly start slowing it down until it comes to a complete stop. It will hover for a millisecond and then 
gravity will start controlling it and bringing it down and will gain speed again and again. Okay, there's a little uh, physics law called the second law of thermodynamics. And basically what that means is that all energy will wind down, all energy will cease at a point. Energy will be used up and there won't be any more movement. But um, we're not worried about that. This means this is no decay. You've heard us say that. That means that there is no uh, law of thermodynamics, second law of thermodynamics coming into that. It means that energy will continually magically be uh, produced. And so this pendulum ball will swing forever without getting lower and lower till it comes to a complete stop, okay? Just gotta put that in because there is a test, um, not in this class, but there is a test later on where you do do a pendulum swing that comes to a slow stop. So I'm continuing now to put my drawings in between and you can see that they're bunching up all the way to 12. And I like, honestly, to be honest, I like to make it hover. I like to make it when it hits the 12th one, I like to put the drawing right on top of it. So it doesn't, but like in increments, so it doesn't come to a complete stop all of a sudden and it looks like, like a natural, but it like hovers for just a minute. And that's what, what um, doing it freehand tends to give that more feeling of life because you can see the movement of it as it hovers. So if I were doing this, I would probably do it, um, if I were doing it like, uh, you know, for real animation, really wanted to look really amazing and, and it was gonna be an animated film called The Pendulum Swing for two hours, a pendulum going back and forth. What I would do is I would do it on ones and I would use much more than, than one second. I would really make that pendulum um, uh, just really hover there for a second so you get the feeling before gravity pulls on it. You could feel gravity pulling on it. But this is just a really quick one. We'll take a look at, at something a little more dramatic later on. So now you can see, this is the full pendulum and it slowly swings down, speeds up on the bottom and then slows down till it gets to the top. So that is your pendulum swing, but you got to bring it back now. You got to bring the the ball all the way back to make a full revolution again, so that it can it can go um, back and forth, back and forth, and without any little uh, break in it, so that you could put it on an endless loop, and there'll be a pendulum swing without any decay at all, no second thermodynamics. It just continually goes on an endless loop back and forth, and it looks good and natural. So. We have slow starting off, fast at the bottom, and then slow again as it creeps up before gravity takes effect of it. Okay, so this is the basics of the pendulum swing. I'm gonna go ahead and complete it just really, really quickly and bring it back to us so that we can see the way, uh, the way my pendulum swing is finished and done. So now I'm, I have it like that. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the drawings back. And yes, by the way, you can also copy paste it and then reverse it if you know how to do that on whatever program you're working on, if you're working on a program. And, um, and that'll work too. Again, I just like to do things freehand. And I like the feeling and the way it looks and the texture and just that human hand with a little bit of, of um, mistakes and different sizes and not the same thing. It, otherwise, to me, it looks copy and pasted. It. it just does, but it's, it's fine as long as you're getting the understanding of it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and draw it um, going back the other way. Okay, so now I've sped up the film, so the timing's gonna look a little bit different, but basically I'm just going back and I am um, adding in all of the other frames. Now I'm just going back and forth and doing the same thing that I did before. I'm just doing the drawings in reverse now. But I'm still thinking of that timing. So here I want to think this ball is slowly, slowly coming back into a place where it's going to speed up at the bottom. So again, look at that drawing right there. It's very close to the original one and that one's close, but it's, it's moving in increments. You see that? 13, 14, 15, all the way to the middle ball, which will be 18 going back, right? And so doing all of this um it takes it takes time and uh how putting the guidelines in there certainly helps but it just it takes time and you might have to do it three or four times but if you do it freehand and do it really quick it won't be so bad also notice i ditched the little string on the end and i'll come back and i'll put the string on there later i'm just i'm just working for speed now and i'm just concentrating on that ball 
So you don't have to put that string in there until later, until you're ready to put it in there. But you should put it in there because it shows a pendulum going back and forth. Um, and so now I'm continuing to work up and the ball is as fast as it's going right there. And now on the 20th ball, I know that I have to go all the way to 24. So I know I have four more drawings before I hit 24, right? There are three more drawings before. So again, I'm getting as close as I can to that last drawing. And now I'll make sure that it matches up and see it's going to slow down right there. The 24th drawing, it's going to slow down until gravity takes a hold of it again. Okay, okay, so I think I brought it down to it's 24 frames per second speed now. And you can really get that feeling that it's slowing down at the top and then speeding up at the bottom. So now I'll go back and I'll start putting, I'll start animating that string in there. But first, I just want to make sure that I get that timing. And I have it all timed out. I know it's taking one second. Again, shot on twos, one drawing for every two frames, 24 frames in one second. So in one second, 24 frames go by. But in one second, um, 24 drawings don't go by. One, uh, 12 drawings go by. It's just going to get, you're going to have to get your mind used to it. And you know what the great thing you should know is that I am terrible in math. And I was really, really bad in math at school. And um, because of animation, I've just had to learn these things. And it is easy if you know your two's timetables. And it's, it's, it's just a matter of getting used to thinking of things in, on 24 frames a second. And um, thank goodness, no matter, even with, with uh, 3D animation and stuff, you can still think of things as uh, 24 frames a second. Just imagine, in one second, 24 frames go by. That means, uh, uh, yeah, it's like the old film. You're gonna have to take our film, one of our classes that talk about that, but um, it is something important to definitely start thinking about. So anyways, here I go. I'm putting that little string on the end. This is my finishing little touch. Now that I've checked out the uh, timing and the spacing and the speed and everything like that, and it's, it's good, it looks fine to me, so now I'm adding that little string on there, and now I have my pendulum swing. So let's take a look at it now, and go ahead and watch the pendulum swing and see how it comes out. And it's, it's again, it's something that maybe took me about 15 or 20 minutes to do, and if even that, and it's just, it's not like beautiful, it's not like this incredibly animated scene that you're gonna put in your portfolio, but you're gonna learn so much of slow in, slow out, which is basically what's happening. As it goes up, it slows in, and then slows back out as it goes back into its rhythm of this loop that it's in. So, in the pendulum swing is what you are learning, slow in, slow out. You're learning so much about everything in animation, and just continue to build upon the squash and stretch and everything else, and we're gonna put a really good animated scene together.